Hi everyone and welcome to week three. This is the sequel review part two. We are going to be focusing on tables, table relationships. So when we talk about tables, the data in our database is organized into tables. The tables have a primary key for each record. Joining tables is so that we can get data from two or more of the tables. There are different types of joins, but that depends on the type of data that we are looking for. The relationship of the tables is based on the primary key and the foreign key. You can involve other values too, but this is just the basic way that we're going to do it. To have the join, you need a related column. So some examples. Let's say we have a table of books and a table of library patrons. By using what we know of SQL so far, we can look at the contents of each individually or manipulate it into a single table if we know how they're related. So we can look at combos. Who borrowed this book? What is the borrowing history of this patron? And so that will take the patron and the book table, and assuming that we have collected this data, then we will be able to look at who borrowed it or how, what books has this person borrowed. So a visual representation of the joints. So for all of these examples, we're going to be looking at table one and table two, or table A and table B. And the different types of joints, we are mostly going to be focusing on inner joints, outer joins, left and right joins. We have so many different types of table joins because there are so many different types of relationships. The results of the joins will show different combos of the data. And because we end up having so many problems that we want to use our data to solve, we might end up needing to explore different types of joins. So let's say we wanted to look at the winner of a reading competition. If we have a table of library patrons who signed up for the competition, a table of books that were checked out for the campaign, we could do an inner join and see who is the winner of the campaign by ordering the results. So we want to look at the patrons and we are looking at the patrons and the campaign checkouts so that we can see who checked out the most books. So another way that we could look at the visualization of the types of joins that we have is these little Venn diagrams. So we can look at things like left joins or right joins, and we can see that that's going to be the total of one of the tables. We could look at things like inner joins, where do the tables overlap, or outer joins, where is everywhere they don't overlap, um, or just sort of a give me everything, everything in all of the different ways. And these are all the different things that we could potentially look at. Now, these different visuals are just different ways to imagine how these joins work. So you can see the left infographic has the Venn diagram and then a sample SQL query. The right infographic has a Venn diagram, a sample SQL query, and what the table might end up looking like, what the results will look like after this has happened. So an inner join. Tables have columns of information. We need to know the names of the columns so that we can figure out what the batch is. If we don't know how the table is put together, we can't ask our queries. So we have to make sure that we are using the correct column names and the correct table names for all of these queries or questions that we're asking. The inner join is where the information on tables A and B, or tables one and two, match looking at this column. This is only where they match. So in this case, we're looking at tables A and B, and we wanna see only where they have this matching data. So let's say we wanted to know patrons of the library who borrowed books in the last six months. We would look at the patrons table and the booked checkouts table, and we would be able to see what that would look like. An outer join is kind of a 
give me everything. Tables will still have columns and information. We still need to know the name of the column and the name of the table. We have to make sure that we're very careful to spell it correctly. We can't add on anything else. An outer join is all the information in both tables, including where they match. This might be less common just because it is a lot of data. So we want to select everything from table A with a full outer join on table B. And so that's basically just like all of the data. So we would take the books table and the patrons table and look at both of them. Any place that there isn't data would actually get automatically filled in with a null value. So if you go back to that first infographic, you can see where null values were filled in. If, for example, there was a patron, but that patron hasn't checked out any books yet, it would get filled in with null values. Left and right joins. Now, when we end up having left outer joins or right outer joins, a left outer join is all the results from table A, including where there are matches from table B. A left outer join where we don't have that match, we would be able to use where to specify that if there are matches, we want to mark it as null. We can do the same thing for right outer joins, but um, we're just looking at the example for left here because this is actually just the order the table is listed. So if we did select everything from table A, left outer join, table B, we could very easily switch it to select everything from table B, left outer join, table A, and you'd get table B. You could also do it the outer the other way and do a right outer join and that would also work. Okay. Table joins can be very confusing and one of the best ways to do it is to practice to see what you're getting. So some advanced SQL puzzles can be a good way to do it. Um, Hacker Rank has some different puzzles that will use different types of table joins. There's also references and cheat sheets that I've included because these different references and cheat sheets will have you be able to actually try some of these different table joins in different ways so you can see what they actually look like in context. NoSQL, which we're going to be talking about more later in term, stands for not only SQL. So NoSQL databases are not relational. I mention this because we have been talking about relational databases so far, and we're going to be sticking to relational databases for a little bit. Examples of NoSQL are things like uh, graph or wide column stores. You can argue that NoSQL is more flexible and scalable. It can handle unstructured and semi-structured data. So if you end up hearing about MongoDB, Redis, or Cassandra, uh, those would be NoSQL. And you might end up wanting to use NoSQL if you're doing things like large databases of large values. So images and videos, really large items. But for now, we are going to be sticking with relational databases, so tables of information that are related to each other in some way. Table relationships are how they can connect and link data. So we can have different types of relationships. We can have one-to-one, one-to-many, many-to-many, -to -many, or self-referencing. Technically, you can also have many-to-one. One-to-one -one is if we assume two tables, table A and table B. One-to-one -one means that each record in table A, there's only one reference to table B. That will be true for table B. There's only one reference from table B to table A. So every single user has a profile. There is only one profile per user. And so if we're looking at, let's say, employees, well, for every employee, there's an employee profile. There's only one employee profile per employee. And we can see looking at table A that there's a primary key for user IDs 1, 2, and 3. And then on table B, there's a primary key for profiles, profile 1, profile 2, and profile 3. And we can see that that is linked to the table A user ID 
for making sure that we know which profile goes with which user. So this is the illustration of a one-to-one -one relationship. A one-to-many relationship, we are again going to assume tables A and B, just for simplicity. Each record for table A can have multiple associations with table B. Table B is only going to have one association with table A. So in this example, we have only a couple of departments, but there are multiple employees. And these multiple employees will be in the different departments. So if we have four different apartments, tech, accounts, PR, and product, we have multiple employees, but we can have multiple people in, say, the PR department, multiple people in the accounts department. And you can again see that both tables have this primary key, and we can see the relationship being illustrated using that foreign key so that we know which employee goes in which department. So this is another visualization of how this would work. This is a one-to-many relationship. So one department can have multiple employees, but employees wouldn't necessarily be in multiple departments. In this particular case, they wouldn't be allowed to be. However, we can have many-to-many -many relationships. Each record in table A can have multiple associations with table B. Table B can have multiple associations with table A. So if we had multiple employees in different departments, and different departments would have multiple employees, and that can go back and forth. So in this case, we're going to look at students and courses. So we have a table of students, students one, two, and three. We have a table of courses, courses one, two, and three. And we can see that each of these tables have a primary key. And in this case, we can actually see that we have a table describing the relationship between which courses a student is in. Multiple students can be in multiple courses. Courses can have lots of students in them. So, you know, Alice could be in math, history, and computer science. Math could have Alice, Bob, and Charlie. So we can have all of these different relationships happening all at the same time. This is a many-to-many -many relationship. Self-referencing is sometimes referred to as a recursive relationship. A table foreign key references its primary key. So this example, all employees are staff including managers, but each employee has a manager. So in this particular case, we have the employees, Alice, Bob, and Charlie. They are employees one, two, and three. But we can see that according to this, Bob and Charlie report to Alice because they are going to be using manager ID one. And I'm just assuming Alice is the manager. Maybe it's, I don't know, somebody else, Susie. Um, but in this case, Alice doesn't have a manager ID. Her manager ID is null, which means she doesn't have a manager. She's, you know, the top of the heap, as it were. Um, so this would be considered a self-referencing table where we end up having the um, foreign key referencing the primary key. And we can see the foreign key and the primary key are listed and color-coded here. So that's a self-referencing table. So these are all of the different types of relationships that can be illustrated in different tables for relational databases. All of these different relationships are really important for us to know so that we can figure out how these pieces of data can connect to each other because we need to make sure that we know what questions we can actually ask. So for example, if we have a list of books and we have a list of patrons, but we don't have a table keeping track of which patrons are borrowing which books, we wouldn't be able to ask, you know, who's borrowed the Lord of the Rings this month because we didn't track that data. 
So it's really important that we know what data is being tracked, how it's being tracked, and then keeping track to make sure that we know that, you know, Lord of the Rings has been borrowed by these three people this month, and we're recording that somewhere. So these are all the different types of relationships that we can have and the different types of joins that we're likely to be seeing. That is the end of week three. I hope you are all doing well and having a lovely day.